Hi there! Today we're going to talk about Vectors Database's performance. If you're using Vector Databases in production or planning to use one, you must understand what factors determine its speed performance. In this video, I will summarize the technical aspects that really determine Vector Database performance. I will focus on technical concepts, performance characteristics, and optimization approaches that can dramatically improve your Vector Database operations. Without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start by discussing the indexing algorithms. The core of vector database performance is the indexing algorithm that powers approximate nearest neighbor search. These algorithms determine how vectors are organized and accessed during search operations. Let's get technical about the main approaches you can use. The first one is called HNSW, or Hierarchical Navigable Small Word. This algorithm creates a multi-layered graph structure with connections between vectors at different levels. It offers excellent query speed with 95% plus recall accuracy, but here's the catch. Its memory consumption is significant, often 50 to 100 bytes per vector, beyond the vector data itself. The query times typically range from 1 to 5 milliseconds for a million-scale dataset. The other algorithm is called IVF, or Inverted File Index. This algorithm partitions your vector space into clusters, searching only the most relevant clusters. These scale better to billion scale datasets, but trade some accuracy. The key parameter is called nList, which is the equivalent of number of clusters. Setting this to square root of your dataset side is a good starting point. The other algorithm you can pursue is called product quantitization. It compresses vectors by encoding them into a smaller representation. This can reduce memory by 75 to 95 percent, but introduces quantization error. IVF PQ combinations are common for balancing performance and scale. Tree based approaches like ANOI build force-like structures. They are excellent for disk based deployments where memory is limited. The key insight about this discussion regarding algorithms is that algorithm selection should be data dependent. For 10 million or more vectors, consider IVF PQ. For less than 1 million vectors, where accuracy is critical, HNSW typically delivers best results. The other technical consideration you must evaluate is hardware optimization. It's about matching your computing resources to the specific demands of vector search. The physical infrastructure you run your database dramatically affects performance outcomes, and the hardware choices directly impact performance with clear technical trade-offs. Let's discuss that now. The first trade-off has to do with GPU acceleration. It provides asymmetric benefits across workloads. The performance gain is most significant for batch operations and large datasets, with diminishing returns for individual queries due to data transfer overhead. The speed-up varies widely based on the specific operations and implementations of your use case. Memory versus disk trade-offs. It presents a fundamental decision point. In-memory vector search operates significantly faster when compared to disk-based approaches due to the elimination of I.O. latency. The performance differentiation typically ranges from 50 to 200x, depending on storage technology and, of course, your access patterns. CPU vectorization through SIMD instructions is another trade-off. Whatever approach you are using, they accelerate distance calculations by processing multiple vector elements simultaneously. The theoretical performance improvement scales with the width of the vector register, up to 16 times for 512-bit register, compared to scalar operations. Here is the technical decision framework for you to consider regarding all those trade-offs. If latency requirements are less than 20 milliseconds, in-memory approaches are practically required. 
If you need scale beyond RAM limits, consider quantitization before going to disk-based solutions. Distance matrix and dimensionality define how similarity is calculated and how much computation is required. These fundamental aspects determine the computational load of each query and directly influence search speed. Each distance calculation has different computational costs, and it is important for you to consider each one of them. The first one is called dot product. This is the fastest, requiring d multiplications and d minus 1 additions. The other one is known as cuisine similarity. This one requires normalization plus dot project, which is slower unless vectors are pre-normalized. The other one is known as Euclidean distance. It requires d multiplications, d additions, and a square root operation. The performance gap is measurable and scales with dimensionality and the data set size. Dimensionality has a linear impact on computational time. Each additional dimension increases both memory usage and computational time, proportionally. Dimension reduction techniques like PCA or random projection can provide significant in performance improvements when query speed is critical, though they must be balanced against potential accuracy loss. There are two practical optimizations you can pursue. The first one is pre-normalize your vectors at insertion time and using cuisine similarity. Two, consider dimension reduction techniques if query speed is critical and some accuracy loss is acceptable. Another very important technical consideration is the usage of embedding models. Embedding models transform your raw data into vector representations and their characteristics profoundly affect search performance. The models you choose determine vector properties that cascade through your entire search system. Different models create fundamentally different vector spaces. Let's discuss some of them now. OpenAI's text embedding ADA002, the one with 1536 dimensions, it provides high quality, but it is computationally expensive. Asbert models, the ones with 384 dimensions, provides faster computation due to lower dimensionality. Specialized domain models may offer better semantic representation, but for very specific tasks. These embedding model properties directly impact indexing efficiency. This is important when you are actually adding your vectors to your vector database. The first one is vector distribution. Models with more uniform distribution, the ones with higher entropy, create more challenging search spaces, affecting algorithm efficiency. Intrinsic dimensionality, even high dimensional vectors, often contain information in a smaller effective dimension. Numerical precision requirements. Some embeddings maintain accuracy with reduced precision, FP16, for example, saving lots of memory. Here is a technical optimization opportunity for you. Model distillation can create smaller, faster embeddings, tuned for specific domains, potentially reducing dimension while maintaining task-specific accuracy. The embedding model and vector database form a unified system. Treating them as integrated components leads to better performance optimization. For a much deeper exploration of how embedding models affect vector search performance, check out this video where the topic is further explored. Now let's talk about how to tune your indexes. Index tuning parameters are configuration settings that control how vector indexes are built and searched. These parameters create explicit trade-offs between research usage, search speed, and result quality. For HNSW indexes, these are the key parameters you must include. The parameter M controls connections per node. It typically ranges from 16 to 64. Higher values improve recall 
but increase memory usage quadratically. The parameter EF construction controls index build quality. It ranges from 100 to 500 typically. Higher values create better indexes but increase build time. The parameter EF search controls query time accuracy, speed trade-off, which can be adjusted per query. Now, for IVF indexes, these are the parameters that you should pay attention to. The end list represents the number of clusters. Optionally, it is the square root of n, where n represents your vector count. The parameter n probe represents the number of clusters to search, typically range from 8 to 64, and it directly controls the accuracy and speed trade-off you must take into consideration. These parameters create explicitly trade-offs between build time versus square time performance. Also, memory usage versus recall accuracy. And query speed versus result quality. The key insight for you is parameters should be turned systematically based on your specific data distribution, hardware constraints, and accuracy requirements. Now let's talk about chunking strategies. Chunking strategies determine how your source content is divided into pieces before vectorization. This pre-processing step influences both the quality and the quantity of vectors in your database, and with direct performance implications. Chunking directly impacts vector database performance in three critical ways. Number one, vector count. The number of chunks directly translate to vector count, which has a linear relationship with search time. Number two, vector quality. How you chunk determines semantic coherence and search precision of each vector. Number three, index structuring. Chunk characteristics affect clustering efficiency and index transversal speed. Heads up, for a detailed breakdown of specific chunking strategies, check out this other video that talks about this topic exclusively. The link is in the description. The technical optimization framework for chunking remains critical. You need to balance chunk granularity against search latency requirements and context preservation needs. Smaller chunks increase vector count but improve precision, whereas larger chunks reduce index size but may dilute relevancy. Performance-wise, your chunking strategy can be as important as your choice of database or indexing algorithm. The right approach depends on your content type query patterns and performance requirements. This is why chunking deserves dedicated attention in your vector search optimization process. Like I mentioned in the beginning, vector performance is much more complicated than just simply choosing between database A, B, or C. Here is a summary of the technical factors that determine if your vector database is truly fast. Number one, Indexing algorithm selection based on dataset scale and recall requirements. Number two, hardware optimization matches to query patterns and latency needs. Three, distance metrics and dimensionality management for computational efficiency. Number four, embedding modules that balance semantic quality and performance. Five, Carefully tune index parameters based on systematic testing. And number six, chunking strategies optimized for your content structure. The cumulative impact of these optimizations can be transformative. The performance difference between an optimized and an optimized vector search system often spans orders of magnitude. The overall key insight Vector search performance comes from the entire system working together, not just the database you choose. If this technical breakdown was useful, hit subscribe for more in-depth vector search optimization guides. Drop your specific performance challenges here in the comments. Catch you in the next one.